The new 2022 Tundra has some pretty cool new off-road features available that you couldn't get in Tundras of the past, but when do you use them and how do they work? We're gonna take a look at that in today's video. Real quick, we'll start by going over how to activate the four-wheel drive system in both four high and four low. Basically, you're gonna to wanna to drive in two-wheel drive the majority of the time. The only time that you wanna be in four-wheel drive is if there's snow or ice or you're off on a loose surface and you need the additional traction. In general, what I would say is stay in two-wheel drive until you need the four-wheel drive or unless you're in a situation where you know that it's pretty likely that you'll get stuck and then go ahead and start with the four high and then four low is basically for driving under like five miles an hour. So you're only going to use that in the really low speed situations. In general, you want to stick with the four high setting and then four low is required to use a few of the off-road features as well. Shifting to four-wheel drive is pretty simple. You can do it when you're parked or in you're moving up to about 60 miles an hour you will need to have the gear shifter in either park reverse or drive not in the neutral position and then we're just going to push down on this and slide it to the 4h position look up at the instrument cluster you'll see the 4h lettering in green when that's solid it's locked in four high now to shift into four low we've got to put the vehicle in neutral so shift to neutral do the same thing just push down and slide to the 4l position now you'll see the orange light flashes when it's engaging. Once it's engaged, it goes solid. Next up, we've got our multi-terrain select system. This basically has eight different traction modes, four for four high and four for four low. So depending on which four wheel drive system is engaged, you'll have access to those various modes. Basically, these adjust the vehicle throttle and brake response to maximize overall traction. So say, for example, you're driving through snow, you might wanna have more wheel spin. So the vehicle is going to allow more wheel spin as opposed to, let's say you're driving on rocks, you don't wanna have a lot of wheel spin. It's gonna to wanna to really slow those down and minimize that as much as possible. So it kind of makes those adjustments for you and it can be a handy little system to assist. To use multi-terrain select, you'll see we've got this button right here. We'll just go ahead and push that. And then we use this rotary knob to scroll between the various modes. You'll see up here on the instrument cluster, we've got four modes currently. We are in four low. So those modes include rock, mud, sand, and mogul. To get to the other four modes, we're gonna have to go back to our four high position. So we'll go ahead and shift into four high. Once that is engaged, uh, just push the multi-terrain select button again if you haven't already. And then we're gonna scroll again. Now you'll see that our four modes are deep snow, mud, sand, and dirt. Next up, we've got our electronic locking rear differential. And this is gonna be ideal for situations where you have the potential to lose most of your traction on one of the rear tires or maybe all of it. And the reason for that is that vehicles intentionally have an open differential so that when you're driving and you go around a corner, the outside tire can spin faster than the inside tire. Now that is a good thing for normal driving conditions. It's the complete opposite of what you want when you're off-roading. The reason for that is that if one of your tires comes off the ground, the vehicle is gonna think that that's the outside tire. It's gonna send all of the power to that side and no power to the tire that has contact with the ground. The locking differential will force the vehicle to send 50% of power to each of those two tires. And so that's gonna be really ideal in those specific situations. To use our locker, we will wanna be in four low and have the vehicle in drive. And then we've got this button right here. We're just gonna push on that. And you'll see on the instrument cluster, this little red light that's flashing down here. When that's flashing, it's trying to engage. Once it goes solid, the rear locker is engaged. I have found that occasionally with this, you'll need to maybe move the vehicle forward or backward a little bit to get that engaged. So it is ideal to have this engaged before you get stuck rather than after you're stuck. There we go. Now that is locked into place. Next, we've got crawl control, which is a pretty cool system. It's a little bit like multi-terrain select where the vehicle controls the braking and throttle response, but there's less user input. Basically, you just focus on steering and the vehicle will focus on acceleration. You can adjust the speed uh, from about two miles an hour up to 18 miles an hour. And it's really an ideal system for situations where you're going up a really steep incline on loose soil. The vehicle will maximize traction and do its best to eliminate wheel slippage. It can also be a pretty handy system if you get stuck. I've found a couple times where I've tried to get out, haven't been successful, and gave crawl control a try and it got me out successfully. So it's a pretty cool system. To use crawl control, you will need to be in the four low position as well as in drive. And we're just gonna push on this button right here that says crawl. And you'll see on the instrument cluster, it brings up the crawl control screen. 
Um, the rotary knob here in the middle, we can turn that to the left to slow the vehicle down and to the right to speed it up. So um, as I turn it to the right, you'll see the green there going from low up to high. So again, you can change that speed from a low of about two miles an hour to a high of about 18 miles an hour. When you're ready to use the system, you just let off the brake and the vehicle will take control of accelerating. Last but not least, we've got hill descent control, which is basically like crawl control for going down really steep hills. And so same idea, if you're going down a really steep downgrade and you've got a really loose surface, there's a high probability of wheel slippage or skidding. The vehicle can take control of the braking uh, to minimize those possibilities, maximize traction, and hopefully get you safely down the hill. With this system, again, you're just focusing on steering and the vehicle takes control of the braking for you. Uh, you can manually adjust the speed from about two miles an hour up to 18 miles an hour. To use hill descent control, you'll need to be in the four high position as well as in drive. And then we're gonna push on this same button here. So this button will only work for crawl control if you're in four low and hill descent control if you're in four high. Then this rotary knob here, we're gonna use again to the left to slow the vehicle down, to the right to speed it up. You'll see on the instrument cluster, we've got the screen here for hill descent control. Again, goes from a low of about two up to 18 miles an hour. And we can use that rotary knob to speed the vehicle up by going to the right or slow it down by going to the left. When you're ready to use the system, you just let off the brake pedal and it, the vehicle will control the braking for you. So that's a look at some of the new off-road features on the all new Tundra and how to use them. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and for more videos of the 2022 Tundra, be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, thanks for watching.